guys. Okay, I've had a lot of people interested in uh, the stenciled shirts and how I do it. Um, so I'm going to give y'all a rundown of how I do it. So, uh, first of all, <clears throat> I use a fine mist sprayer like this. I used to get them at Sally Beauty Supply or whatever that place was called for hair stuff. And, um, but then they came out with the same exact bottle in cleaners and that kind of stuff. So, uh, the Mr. Clean bottle, the one that I have, it is actually clear. So, uh, this one is a Febreze bottle and it's opaque, which is great for bleach because bleach doesn't like light. Uh, the more light it's exposed to, the more it breaks down. So you don't want it in anything clear for an extended period of time or left in the sun for any period of time. That was my rooster. That's my turkey. Not sure if y'all can see him, but that's Rico Suave. He follows me around like a puppy. So you'll see him in the video. Uh, so anyway, the Febreze bottle is actually opaque. So that's really cool for bleach. Um, it's a fine mist sprayer. The other sprayer that I use is this one. It's from Walmart. It's just like a regular cleaning bottle. It has more of a drippy spray. And then I use it to actually like fling the little dots onto it. Um, the other thing that I'm using is the adhesive spray. It's called quilt basting spray. I got it at Walmart. It is a, my livestock would be quiet. Um, <clears throat> I got it at Walmart. It's for quilters, I guess, like to keep their quilt squares in place while they sew it. That's what I'm guessing. Um, but anyway, it's made for fabric and, uh, it doesn't leave a residue. Some of the other sprays will leave a residue. Um, so this one's great for that. So what I'm going to be doing with this is spraying it on the back of my stencils before I lay my stencils down. That makes, you know, it, the bleeding a little bit less um i really don't have a problem bleeding with it bleeding but um the spray definitely helps keep it um from bleeding if it was going to so uh this set of shirts is getting numbers but they're going to be numbers on the back so i'll probably show that too but so what i do with my shirts is lay them out um i want all my shirts to kind of look the same unless a customer asks for something different so I bunch it up at the top, bottom, whatever, bunch it up at the top, and I go down and just do all of them uh, the same way. Just a little bit. There's no rhyme or reason, no scientific anything. I just bunch them up. So then I come through with my fine mist sprayer and then just give them a little spray in that area that I pinched. So I'll go down and do all of them at the same time like that. So then I'll go back through with my uh, Walmart sprayer. Now just kind of, just lightly give it a mist, not much. And then I take the sprayer out and I just kind of fling some drops on it. So, I should have started this video with ignore the look, but this is normal. <laughs> so, uh, that's it. So, after I get that part done, I just kind of lay them out flat again just so the light can get to them. They need to be flat for the stencils <clears throat> to go on anyway. So, I let them process. So, I'm going to let these go. I'm going to let do the other ones, and then I'll come back with the actual stenciling. I've got them all um, sprayed, splattered, and now I'm going to put on the stencils. So the stencils that I use, they look like this. They're mylar type of plastic, and they are um, seven and a half mils, in case you guys are going to go looking for them. But they're mylar sheets. They come in all different lengths. You can get even a roll of it. 
but I bought these in 12 by 24 so I can get them on my 12 by 24 Cricut mat. Um, the lace is just a Google image of a baseball lace uh, that I uploaded to Design Space and then uh, cut on my Cricut. So Mylar stencil blanks and, um, sorry, car. Uh, so anyway, what I'm gonna do um, is I'm going to use my adhesive spray and I'm gonna spray the back of the, the lace. It doesn't take a lot, it really doesn't. So what you're gonna do is just lay it on your shirt and then you're gonna press it down. And you'll take your next one. Spray it on the back. I do, on, on these, I like to get the lace that's on the front of the shirt, kind of right next to the collar, next to the, or on the shoulder, I guess you would say, because um, obviously there's the neck that's in the way. And then um, a lot of people sub on these or whatever, and I don't want to get in uh, the way of their design that they're going to put on it. So I go a little bit higher on the front with this lace than I do on the back. The back, I kind of bring it down in the middle of the neck and go under the sleeve, but it doesn't matter. I mean, whatever looks good to you guys uh, will work. So what I normally do is go down and I will stencil all of them. I'm just gonna do them one at a time just so I can show you. Um, that bottle was in the way, I apologize. Um, so then after you get your stencils on, you're gonna mask it. So what this is going to do is it's gonna prevent the overspray of your bottle getting to the straight line of this stencil. Um, you know, most of this is very organic looking, so you don't want a line from the edge of the stencil um, on your shirt in bleach because it just, it doesn't go with the rest of it. So masking is just used to cover up any of the shirt. There's no rhyme or reason. I usually move these pieces around just depending on which one I'm spraying at that time. Um, they don't have to stay there or anything. Little pieces like this, I just kind of tuck under. So if you're gonna stencil a bunch of them at a time, when you come back to start spraying, make sure that your stencil is down because you know, you've gotten all the way down there and the adhesive might have come up or whatever. So before you start spraying, just press it down. Oh, and I wanted to say another thing. In the first video, I didn't have them on, but wear gloves. Um, I was one of those, I don't need gloves. Why do I need gloves? But when I started selling wholesale and doing a bunch of them at a time, I got chemical burns on my hands, uh, my palms, and I had a couple fingers that ended up even peeling because the burns were so bad. So if you're gonna be doing a lot, if you're gonna be doing any, it's a good idea, but if you're gonna be doing a lot, definitely wear gloves. You just don't, it, it's uncomfortable, it hurts. It, when I was driving and had my hand on the steering wheel, it would hurt because I was, it was burned on my palm. So then what I'm gonna do, make sure the shirt next to it is in the way. So then after I get everything masked, I go back with the fine mist sprayer again you always want to spray from the top. You never want to spray, spray from the side because, you know, if there's a place where your stencil isn't down good enough, the bleach is going to get under it. So you're going to go from the top, just kind of give it a good spray, and then move on to the next one. You want to kind of get the wrinkles out. Up here at the neck, it's kind of hard, and on the sleeve because it wants to wrinkle in places. I mean, which is fine. These are obviously distressed looking, but you know, once you take your stencil off, if you have a big old huge line, that might not be what your customer wants. So um, depending on what your shirt looks like, I would advise going back with a paper towel and just kind of dabbing it off the plastic because I mean, these shirts are obviously speckled, so it doesn't really matter if it drips, but if you go to remove this stencil and there's wet bleach all over the top of it and you don't want bleach in other areas, when you peel it off, that uh, liquid, the bleach, is gonna just, you know, run off and get on places on your shirt you don't want. So um, go through and kind of dab it if you don't want it everywhere. 
and then uh, you let this process. And then I do, like I said before, I do them all at once. So, oh, and this is craft paper. I mean, this was pretty thick craft paper, but it doesn't really need to be that thick. You can use newspaper, you can use um, anything. The craft paper, the thinner craft paper comes in rolls in Walmart. They're usually like with the packing supplies, moving supplies, boxes, that kind of thing. And that just gives you something easy to mask. Um, I usually don't put anything in my shirts when I'm just doing laces. Um, you want to spray a minimal amount of bleach and you want to um, not soak it. So that's why this mist sprayer is great because it doesn't put a lot of bleach out at a time. So when I'm just doing laces, I usually do not put anything in my shirt. Um, if I'm going to do a blank for somebody with a big bleach spot on the front, I put something in between it. And these are going to get numbers on the back. So I am going to be putting something in them because I don't want that number, you know, to, to bleed through and you see the reverse of a number on the other side. So um, you can use anything in between the shirts. I use cheap Dollar Tree placemats. With the bigger shirts though, they're kind of small. So, um, you know, you can use anything. You can use this craft paper or anything inside. But um, unless I have a design on the front in bleach or I'm doing a bleach blank with a spot, I usually don't put it inside. If you find you're heavy handed with your bleach, <laughs> first of all, be less hand heavy handed. But um, you might want to go ahead and put something in if you're finding that it's bleaching on the back. Now, some of these uh, spots will go through, but um, you can't tell on that one. Yeah, I don't know if y'all can see that, but there's a few spots here, which is fine because I'm going to do that same effect on the back. But if you're not going to bleach the back, I always bleach the back on my shirts. But if you're not going to be bleach the black back, sorry, um, then, you know, you might want something in there so those uh, drips don't go through. So uh, I'm going to stencil and mask the rest of these and then and spray and then I'll come back. So all of these are masked and all of these are sprayed. I'm just gonna let them process for a little bit, but I thought I'd go over a few things while I was waiting. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Check on your stencils, check on your bleach. Um, as soon as you feel there's enough bleach in your stencil, you can remove it, but don't do it prematurely because if you didn't get a spot good enough and you have to go back and try to put the stencil on exactly where it was and spray it, it's hard, it can happen, you can do it, but um, just leave them until uh, you know that it's done correctly, especially if you don't have bulk stencils cut, because obviously you're gonna need to use this stencil for the next shirt, but give it a little bit of time, because I've done that before. I've taken the stencil off, gone my merry way, and then I realized that I didn't get that shirt good enough. I have to re-stencil it, spray it again. <laughs> so keep an eye on the bleach, if there's any places <clears throat> that need a little extra, just go through and spray. Just make sure there's nothing unmasked that you're going to spray. Um, but you just kind of gauge how it's going. So while these are processing, um, funny thing about the shirt is I've had this shirt, bleached in this shirt for many years. 100% cotton. It's a Gildan, 100% cotton. And obviously it's got stuff all over it and obviously I wash it, but I don't neutralize it or do anything crazy. And this shirt has no holes, <laughs> of course. If you tried to bleach 100% cotton, not in wanting holes, you'll have holes. But um, while I'm on that subject, I'll go over this. Um, these are Bella Canvas. They're the 3001 CVCs, uh, Heathers. Um, this is a Heather Red. I also use the Gildan 640 Heathers. Um, they're higher in, these are actually lower in poly. They're 48%. So if we're going to sub on these, it's going to be kind of a vintage look. Unless, <laughs> unless maybe you use poly tea or something like that. But the Gildan Heathers are 65% poly. Um, so they're better to sub onto. But, uh, or not but, but I see a lot people saying that only the Heathers bleach, and that's not true. Um, the Heathers bleach well, 
and the heathers are suggested for bleaching and subbing because of the higher poly count. But out of the 95 swatches of Gildans that I have that I've bleached, I think three or four didn't bleach at all, but there's only like 19 uh, heather colors and they all bleached, most of them bleach. So it's not the only the heather colors that bleach, they're just recommended for subbing and bleaching because of the higher poly count. It really has nothing to do with the fact that they'll bleach or not. However, a lot of the other Gildans that bleach well are 100% cotton. So, and I never, um, I never bleach 100% cotton. I've done it. I wouldn't say I never do it. I've done it. I've never had a hole. I've never had a problem. But um, it's just safer not to bleach 100% cotton. But there's tons of other Gildan colors that bleach other than the Heathers. Um, so that's kind of a, a uh, I don't know, rumor, <laughs> whatever you want to say, that's seen in groups and then repeated over and over. But um, another thing is I use a 50-50 bleach water solution. I never use 100% bleach. I've done it. It doesn't look any different. As you can see, it bleaches just fine with a dilution. And if you dilute it, it's obviously not going to damage the shirt as much. So I, um, I dilute my bleach always 50-50. Um, I use Clorox, I use off-brand. I've never seen a big difference in uh, the way they bleach. So that's not really that big of a deal. You might have a preference that you feel works better and that's great. It's all about finding what works for you. Um, <clears throat> after I bleach my shirts, with the 50-50 solution, I put it in the sink in a peroxide water bath. So I use one part peroxide to 10 parts water. Honestly, I don't measure, I just kind of eye it and uh, put the peroxide in the water, stir it around a little bit and then put my shirts in. So they'll sit in that bath for 15 to 20 minutes uh, to neutralize the bleach so it doesn't um, damage the fabric anymore and so uh, the bleach doesn't transfer to other places on the shirt you don't want it so after the bath I wash and dry normally um, I do use all free and clear detergent on all of my shirts um, but in every one of my listings I list my process so the customer knows what I've done to these shirts and if they have allergies they you know can determine whether they want to purchase the shirt or not so just always explain your process so your customers know um, what you've done to the shirt. Obviously, bleach shirts have to be washed before they're sent to customers. So um, I just list my process and you should be good to go. Um, I also use hot water. Um, I use hot water for everything except diluting my bleach. Uh, I actually emailed Clorox and asked them if it mattered because I see a lot cold only and all that. Um, <clears throat> and Clorox's email back to me was that the temperature of the water for bleaching purposes really doesn't matter. However, hot water scientifically breaks down chemicals faster. So hot water breaks down the hypochlorite faster than the cold water. Um, you know, our, our washer bleaching setting or um, our washer, what am I trying to say? Like cycle settings doesn't allow for anything to be on the shirt for, you know, an extended period of time. So the, the water being cold or hot really doesn't matter. But like I said, uh, you know, it's a scientific fact that hot water breaks down pretty much anything better. That's why you use hot water to, you know, get stains out and stuff. It breaks the, the stain, the whatever, food, chemical down faster. So I always use hot water except for diluting. I use cold water to dilute. Um, hot water in the peroxide bath, hot water in my washer. So, and I've never had an issue, um, never had a hole. So, um, like I said, it, it kind of just is up to you, you know, take the basics from people that have done it, but then find a process that works the best for you. Um, and then I think you'll be good to go. So, um, I'll talk about this real quick. I'm not to this step yet, but, um, these are going to get numbers on the back. These are actually all going to get the same number on the back. I usually don't have that many with the same number, but I'm not sure if y'all can see this because it's clear, but, um, 
These are my number stencils. I can cut them out of these, but I like to leave these for my longer stencils and not use it for something small. So what this is, and I've, I've posted in the groups and stuff before, the bleaching Facebook groups, um, about um, what I use for my stencils, and it is the Scotch brand um, self-laminating pouches, not the thermal laminating pouches. So it comes with two pieces. It comes with this kind of rigid plastic piece, and then it comes with a sheet that has paper over it that is the adhesive. So if you were laminating, you would pull the paper off, you would put your document down on the sticky, and then this would be on the back of your document. So what I do is I just take the pouches, the two pieces of paper, because they're or plastic because they're connected, you just rip them apart. They're, it's not hard, they just come apart. And then I use a, this piece for, I use it for a couple different projects, but my smaller stencils. Um, don't throw the sticky parts away because I actually use the sticky parts to uh, laminate my business cards that I make. So don't throw that part away. But um, so this is the stencil. I have all the numbers uh, cut. So I just put together the numbers I need. I tape them in the middle and then um, they're good to go for um, putting the number on the shirts. So uh, that's what this is. Um, I do use a Cricut to cut these. Um, let me think. Uh, I use the deep cut blade. I have the pressure. So I create custom settings for almost everything I cut that's thicker. Um, deep cut blade, 350 for pressure. I think I had the multi cut on like three or four. I know I had it on four for these. These are seven and a half mil. This is about nine mil thick. So, um, Anyway, when it's done cutting, if you try that crusher and multi-cut, when it's done cutting, check the cut before ejecting your mat. Uh, once you eject your mat, you're not going to have the ability to line it up again, but let it cut. Don't eject your mat. Check your cut, and if it hasn't gone through, just hit that C button again on your machine, and it'll cut it again. So if it cut four times the first time, it's gonna cut four times the second time. You might not need that much, but um, if you find that it's consist consistently not cutting through, you'll probably wanna adjust your actual setting rather than sending it through again every time. So um, that's what I do with these. So these are gonna get stencils on the, or uh, laces on the front, numbers on the back. I apologize for my livestock. They're being very loud. Hungry go suave. You want to say hi to the people? Here you go. Don't see this every day. Come here, buddy. Come here. Say hi to the people. You say hi to the people? Look. They probably don't care a thing about you since they want to bleach, but say hi. He's such a nice boy. Oh, I got bleach on my hands. That's probably not good. He's such a nice boy. Yeah. Rico Suave for you, people. <laughs> Okay, I'll let these uh, go a little bit, and then um, I will flip them over and do the numbers on the back, and we'll come back and show you that part. Well, these are about done. So whenever you think that you've gotten the stencil good enough, like I said, remember, don't pull it off too soon. But once you think that it's good to go, you can go ahead and remove the stencils. So all you're gonna do is just peel it off. That adhesive lets it come off really easily. You can still let it process from here, but you can just take off the, the laces, the stencils. And then you can flip it over and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the back. So I just wanted to show you real quick that it's it's easy to take it off. Some of these aren't quite where I want them yet, so I don't want to um, flip them over or take those off and flip them over. So then you're gonna flip it over. As you can see, some of the spots went through, which is like I said, not a big deal. Now these are gonna get the numbers on the back. So I only have one set of numbers. I didn't feel like cutting more. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go down the, the line. But anyway, so this is gonna go in um, the center here. And then we're gonna bleach it. I think I'll probably put a lace down here, not up there. So um, when I actually get to the point of uh, 
putting this on and bleaching it. I'll come back. Okay, so um, after I flipped them over, I did the exact same thing on the back where I scrunched the top and the bottom and sprayed it with a fine mist sprayer. And then um, I took the other bottle, sprayed it a little bit, just like I did on the front, sprayed it a little bit and then flinged it. So, um, so now they're ready for the stencil. Uh, here it is, lost it. I might go ahead and cut another one of these stencils so I can do it more than one at a time. But so what you're gonna do with this is you're gonna spray the back of it again with the adhesive, just like you did on the laces. going to go ahead and put um, a stencil on the bottom or a lace Jeez, I keep saying that. a lace stencil on the bottom sometimes too I didn't say this before I don't think but sometimes um, it'll sp especially with the paper um, if you spray it once sometimes you don't have to spray it again so and that would save an adhesive if you could um, use it again so um, you can check and see if you can get away with it. So this one's gonna overlap a little bit. So I'm gonna have to do one first and then the other. So I'm gonna mask the laces. Spray the laces, take that off and then spray the number because it's overlapping just a little bit right there in the middle. So give that a good spray give it a minute make sure that it is good nice and sprayed and you got enough bleach okay, butterfly. and then if it is then you can pull this stencil off and then you can bleach your number because you're gonna have to uh, mask around the number so you kind of want to today. I was wrong. So I'll let that go for a little bit and then I'll show you spraying the numbers. Okay, I've masked off the numbers. I've done all these laces and then I masked off the numbers just like I did um, for the laces. Sometimes it just depends on how you're masking and what you're using. Sometimes I use an adhesive spray if I'm worried about it. Um, getting under there. So after you get it masked, just really lightly spray with your mist bleacher or your <laughs> mist sprayer. And then you're just going to let it process. Like I said, if you have all the same number, you might want to cut more stencils. You can cut it out of the craft paper. Um, you could cut it out of almost anything. So, uh, if you have a bunch of the same number. I usually don't have, I think I already said that, I usually don't have people wanting a bunch with the same number. They usually want a bunch with different numbers. So this must be for a family, I'm guessing, that has one baseball player. So I'm gonna dab that off a little bit just so it doesn't go under. And then I'm gonna do the same process um, on all the shirts. And then when I get finished, I'll come back and show you what it looks like finished. I'm on my second to last numbered shirt and just kind of wanted to show you that I think in the last video I showed you how I use the adhesive on these two just to keep them down. But I wanted to just show you um, unmasking and uh, taking this stencil off. 
I got this one to do. Those two don't get numbers. So I just wanted to show you this process. Obviously it's not done processing, but you just peel the stencil off. If you're gonna use the same stencil, by the way, after you peel it off, make sure that the back of the stencil is dry and doesn't have any bleach on it. Because when you put it down on your next shirt, if it has bleach, it's gonna make some weird stuff happen around your number. So just make sure that the back is dry. So what I do after I peel it off, is I just take it and I turn it over and I just kinda do this. You don't want any like major wet bleach spots on the back because I'll just make weird spots on your shirt. So there, since I got it on, I'll just do this one. Make sure your shirt's flat, no wrinkles. I always have to look at my stencil to see which side I need to spray. And then just line it up. I just kind of eye it, but you know, kind of line up your I have the same amount of distance between here and here from the numbers. So you're probably, I mean, you're gonna have the same from here to here um, on the stencils. Just, it's a little crooked. I always try to eye it, get it late. Oh. I was going to say is I always try to put it about the same amount of space between the top and the bottom and then um, just like we did before I'm going to mask it sometimes your masking paper can get wet too with the bleach and you don't want to reuse those so just make sure that your masking paper doesn't look wet before you mask again with it it doesn't really matter when you're just like laying it on it for like the laces and stuff, but if you're actually gonna use adhesive and um, stick them down around like a stencil, you don't want it to be really wet because then it'll also leave weird spots. See that one? Oh, doesn't look too bad right here. And you'll figure this all out once you get started. We all have to make mistakes. Lord knows I'm no pro. And I make mistakes. So we learn from them and we keep on going. So that stencil and mask is down. Don't get crazy over here because you don't have it masked, but and then wait for it to process and come back and spray it again if you need to. So these have got a little bit longer. That one needs to process, but that's it. And then I, I will come back, like I said, in the last clip to show you what it looks like completely done. Um, I already took the other ones in that I did, so I don't have those to show you because now I'm neutralizing. So that's it. Okay, this is the the ta-da. So here's the back, the front. These got numbers on the back, not the front. Um, <clears throat> back front. So I just, I promised I would give you all a, a final outcome. So I just wanted to show y'all before I packed them up and sent them away. So there you go. If you guys have any questions, just chopping my head off uh comment if this is on youtube i guess you can comment off on facebook too i'll probably put it on my group and then on my youtube channel so anyway there they go